This is Bass Talk Live. Your host, Mark Jeffries and Matt Pangrad. BTL is brought to you by Lawrence. Lures. Strike King Lures. Bass Cat Boats. Ducket Fishing. Spro. AFCO. Sunline. And TH Marine. BTL coming at you. Good Monday, everybody. Welcome once again to BTL Bass Talk Live, where we're going to talk bass fishing and anything else that we want to talk about. Yes, it is 2020. Matthew, how you doing? I'm doing great. We are nine days away from the start of the 2020 season with the uh, Eastern Open kicking off on January 15th. Yeah, it is almost here. And finally, finally, we get to start to talk about tournament bass fishing. But first, how was your how was your New Year's, man? It's it been was a, all it's right, been man. a while. We've had a oh, week and a half off. You see, we've got a brand new intro. That was yeah. actually the first time I've seen it. We've got some minor changes to the studio. Just cleaned up, a little crisper, cleaner. One of yeah. the biggest, I guess, the biggest change is I have a functioning computer after seven years of of having to reboot and. Yeah. Redownload everything. It's even a touch screen now. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll have unlimited information <laughs> at my fingertips. So what did you do? Did you go out and celebrate? No, I didn't do anything. Did you man. get dressed up in a tux? No, no, no. Take no, no. Carolyn out. No, out I'm and about trying town? to take it easy. Dude, I've had some ups and downs with this whole meds that I'm on. Are you, know, you back had, to No, my blood pressure's ninety over sixty two, which what's it is supposed to be. I I mean normal's kind of one twenty over seventy. So this blood pressure medicine that I'm on, it's just, it gets me dizzy sometimes. And I haven't even started bowling again. I got cleared on Friday to gradually work my way into it. Mm -hmm. It was my first cardio rehab and I just didn't feel comfortable doing it, dude. I really didn't. I'm going to wait, wait another week and uh, see how it goes and go from there. And oh, by the way, the national PBA 50 senior schedule is coming out on January 15th. I've already got a glimpse of it. It's horrible. Horrible. <laughs> what, just where the location yeah, is? Yeah, see, the way... The, I mean, you got to be gone like two and three months at a time. It's just hey, it's ridiculous. You want to be the, you gotta, you gotta be I, the I, piper if you want to so, do it. Now, you have been busy on the the new newly revamped uh, Bass Zone Bass Talk Live website, I yeah, see. You more, basically... More mobile-friendly. That is the reason that it is kind of looking the way that it is on the computer. It is much, much more mobile-friendly to see what's coming up, what's going on, and watch things from a mobile perspective. Hence, that's the reason that I did what percent? That. What percent of the people who download, listen, watch, view this show do you think do that on a PC? <laughs> like a PC with like the modem I mean, and I a could, screen? I, uh, I could go in and I could pull those stats. But you can uh, pull those stats. You yeah. can tell whether they're looking at it yeah. on a phone or whether... Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd be interested to see yeah. that. Because I don't... I mean, it's I about don't 60% know. mobile. Okay. Yeah. yeah 40%. PC or tablet. Anyway, my point was, you basically have the entire month of January booked. So I do. That, that the BTL and, listeners and let's know talk what's about first. Up. Let's go ahead and and tell them who's on the show today to kick off 2020. We're going to have the Elite Series Rookie of the Year. Drew Cook is going to be on here in about 10, 15 minutes. We're going to have him on live via Skype. And yes, Matthew, I have been very, very busy booking shows because January. What are these guys doing? They're they're getting ready to you know get their boats rigged get their equipment set up uh things are kicking off for those that are fishing uh what the early stuff in the opens and, and yeah i mean i've got oh, what I mean, the january schedule is right now so 15th through 17th is the eastern open yeah. on the Kissimmee chain yeah. then the following week is the flw pro circuit on sam rayburn the 23rd through the 26th then the 30th through the first is the flw uh series on Toledo Bend. Yeah. Then that following week is the Elite Series on the St. John's River. Uh, that's the, the 6th through the 9th. And then the 7th, the BPT on Lake yeah. Ufala in Alabama starts. So we've got, like I said, we've got like nine days, and then it's every single week either yeah. an Open, a Series, a, a Tour, or a BPT event, or an Elite Series. So, Can't wait. 
Can't wait to get things kicked off here just shortly. All right, I want to run through real quick what we have lined up in January. It's impressive. I got, got to hand it All to right, you. All right, tomorrow, do you know who uh, Jacob Wall is? Have you uh, ever heard of him? Yes, but I do not. I mean, I don't know him. Right. I have heard of him, yes. Very interesting story. He's from Oregon. He went the college route, and he's going to be making his debut uh, on BTL. We've never had him on before, and I, I'm really looking forward to to, to uh, hearing what he has to say on how he got into this game and what his plans are for this year in 2020. On Wednesday, Jacob Wheeler. Uh, do we call him MVP? He'll call him whatever he wants to be called. <laughs> no, because he won the MVP. Yeah, we'll ask him about that. All right, we'll talk a little bit about that, what he has uh, in the works sponsor-wise. Uh, one of the more well-represented anglers from a sponsorship standpoint out on tour. So we'll see what... Uh, his thoughts are on the 2020 season. Then, the next week, on Monday the 13th, Cliff Crochet. Big announcement? Is that right? Yeah, I think he's got, like, life announcements and sponsor <laughs> announcements. A lot going on with the Cajun Baby, but uh, all good. Also, uh, with the Sooners versus LSU game. Oh, it was I'm debacle. I made it. I just made a straight-up bet with him. I mean, it, How much? Can you say? Stakes. Ah, oh, that's not that much. No. I mean, it depends Unless on what you go, kind of stakes. Yeah, if you go big time, go no, like I'll, I'll uh, Reds. No, I'll probably do coat some bone-in some bone in ribeyes for okay. him. Either send them to him or I'll, we'll, we'll hook him up at the restaurant the next time we're, we're together. But All right. Yeah, so we All right, crochet on, on Monday. Uh, on the 14th, the man that's doing a lot, Mr. John Cox, is going to be on the show. Talk about his schedule and logistically how he's going to pull off everything that he's got in the works for 2020. Bassmaster Elite Series and FLW Pro Circuit. Yeah. And then on that Wednesday, a guy that has really been around a long, long time and fished everything, Matt. Yeah, he's got it figured out. I talk, yeah. uh, I hang out a week every year down at uh, Kurt Dove's Pro Bass Camp with him, Matt Reed. You got to follow him on social media. The guy posts nine and 10 pound largemouth from Falcon Lake. Yeah. Like they're two pounders. I mean, it's just like, <laughs> oh, no, another 35, 40 pound string. And he's I, got the guide thing figured out where yeah. he's got a, a, an amazing client base that are, you know, friends and buddies and, yeah. and, and adds a couple new ones and then fishes and he's, he's been catching them you look at his sponsor por portfolio yeah. has been stable so yeah so very excited to get matt on here uh also his golf game still upper tier dude i did not i didn't realize that. oh yeah he can play huh. he can really I'm play a, yeah, we got Wing wenland back on then on the next monday week that kicks, next monday yeah. this is the one that I, that i saw and i know we've been working on this a little so i actually uh the guy who does like the filming for jimmy houston show is also manager of the uh boat storage place in broken arrow <laughs> okay and i had some dude like back into my unit last month and really? i was like Oh, my door won't come up. So I had to call, and then this guy called me back, yeah. and then he's like, yeah, dude, I filmed for Jimmy Houston Outdoors. And I was like, that's cool. And then this kind of came about yeah. with you. But is he going to be here? Yeah, very excited, folks. Jimmy Houston is going to be live right here in the BTL studio on uh, January 21st, and uh, that show may go a little long. Yeah. <laughs> you think the 22nd show will go long, too? Probably go a little long, too. On the 22nd, we're going to have Rick Klun... Uh, hopefully live via Skype. We're trying to work through some stuff. But right now, he's over in Europe. Huh? Yeah, he's in Europe. Uh, I think uh, the Netherlands. Doing I think is where he, with his family. Oh, like just having, military. Yeah. Just having fun. The holidays. He spent the holidays over in Europe. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to hear what he has to say about that. All right. All right. Then uh, let's see here. On the 28th, Tuesday the 28th, we're going to have Brandon Cobb on, get his thoughts on the 2020 season. And I do want to mention a special fourth show on the week of the 13th. On the 16th, folks, we're going to have uh, a business show. Let's just call it a business show, Matthew. Uh, the Senior Vice President of Marketing for Major League Fishing is going to be in studio right here. They're going to drive down from Tulsa. And we're basically going to be uh, free reign on open topics to talk about last year. You know, some of my concerns that, that I feel are out there for last year, some of the good things that they did, and then also discuss what is on tap for 2020 and beyond. Uh, this is going to be his first interview that he's actually done live on an independent media outlet, and to be able to get him 
uh, and and his staff uh, associate to come down here and be on be on the show live. Is it's going to get NFL an opportunity. Guy? Huh? Is this the NFL guy? No. no. You mean the NBC guy? Oh. No. Oh. John Acosta worked for Bass Pro Shops. He was an executive with Bass Pro Shops before he went to Major oh, that's League Fishing. Right. I got those two kids. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, folks, get ready. I mean, I'm sure the instant feedback will blow up on that day about questions. I have to make that drive that I make every day. <laughs> yeah. So it's no big deal, right? No. That's by choice, yeah. though. That's by choice. Hop, skip, and a jump away. Yeah. Uh, and then a little tease for February. Already working on February, folks. Uh, spoke to him for about a half an hour. Uh, we are going to have Kevin Van Dam on in the month of February. And then also Brent Ayler in February. So a lot of work over the break, Matthew. Very cool. All right. So what else, man? What did you do over the holiday? I know you went to Dallas. Yeah. Did you see so, the Cowboy game? Yeah, I went to my first NFL game and first time seeing jerry world down there at&t stadium it's your first time it's very impressive <laughs> it is very very impressive it's really? uh there's a lot just a lot of money in that area is the only way to say it <laughs> it's that whole yeah area down there is really impressive with yeah. the at&t stadium so went to texas live and the pbr bar one night and then the next day went to the dallas cowboys game very nice uh which they won a meaningless game but you know i'm not like a, a big nfl fan yeah i mean i don't like root i root for wherever the ou it's players more the are experience yeah isn't it's it? the yeah. experience like i root for the the browns and i root for the cardinals and uh uh yeah i mean <laughs> it, i don't really know what to say about it it was one of those things where you're just like I, you don't have to say did you drop time. did you drop 500 the whole thing, yeah, yeah, but we split it with like two, I got you. two other couples. But I mean, you can't and, go to an NFL game and not expect to spend at least five hundred. Yeah. Did you buy a beer? Yeah, it was nine bucks a beer. Holy guacamole! I How milked, much was parking? Uh, well, we split it four ways, and it was forty bucks to, to park. park. Yeah, but it's, I milked two <laughs> beers the entire game. Wow, for nine bucks. Yeah. Were they big? The sixteen ounces. Okay. The aluminum. The aluminum. It's still cans. a lot, man. That's major profit margin. Jerry's just raking it in. Oh yeah, it's insane. Yeah, yeah. All right, you fish any? Oh my gosh, dude. <laughs> I, I Stupid a, question. I right, sent folks? a personal best two days ago. Well, I want to hear TV. about it. I want to hear about it. So you know, obviously, uh, a buddies with John Sukup and the guys at the Bass Tank who do like, like if you get you want to get the new live site from Lawrence or Garmin's or Hummingbirds, whatever they like install it. They have a team that like installs it and stuff. And they've been doing this for a couple of years, but they like a couple of them are like big in the crappie world. Right. So they're using the live site and the live scope to do like crazy stuff with crappie and catch these like gargantuan crappie. Okay. This is the best way that I can describe it. And I have to be careful with what I say. Cause some of this stuff, they're like, Hey, let's going to keep this on the down low. But some of the stuff, they're, you know, they're all about education and teaching and stuff. Yeah. This is the best way I can describe it. Right now, kind of with this forward-facing technology, to me, is kind of like that big bass boom out in California in the 90s and early 2000s, mm -hmm. where there's like a group of guys that are obsessed with... Uh, with catching giant bass that's how these guys are with the crappie i mean it's not go out and fill the live well up so you can take it home and have a fish fry okay it's go out catch three four five fish a day maybe a dozen yeah. see what your best seven weigh but like don't catch fish under two pounds like yeah. specifically try to target so we're they're having rods made they have baits line lures and there's uh, i i want to say 40 or 50 of these guys that are real serious about it and like the boom is happening like right now the guys like a two pound crappie is like the equivalent i say like a six pound bass wow two and a half pound crappie like a seven or eight pound bass three pound crappie is like a 10 pound bass but they're catching them out of oklahoma right now like stuff that's not ever happened before so i go out and and it's tough i mean it looks simple but it's like very tough i'm i'm trying to figure it out by myself go out with these guys too so i went out with the with um a guy named uh dylan and, and john and we go to this lake that i can't mention what it is because it's like the freaking falcon lake in oklahoma of crappie fishing and like no one knows about it and i jam a 271 crappie oh you gotta go look at my instagram that's, it's that's it's insane huge. but 
so so here's how it is. So I'm standing there with John's custom 14 foot rod, some custom hand tied crappie hair jig with like a big hook on it. Yeah. I've got Dylan up there. He's running the trolling motor, so he's keeping the fish on it. John's <laughs> John's behind over my shoulder. I've got this on YouTube. He's telling me when to drop, where to drop, how to drop, and I'm standing there with the rod going man, I thought I knew how to fish and this is just completely new stuff for me. And you like, you're bringing the bait over the fish, dropping it in front of its nose, watching it angle up and eat it. And then you just set the hook as hard as you can because it's 30 (laughs) pound test braid with a bait casting reel, a quarter ounce, three eighths ounce jig, like heavy wire stuff. And you're jamming a three pounder and boat flipping it. Wow. It's really fascinating stuff. So what'd you do with it? Did you keep it? Uh, you put it. You, you, throw it you back? weigh it. You put it in the live well. You rejuvenate it. You get to where there's nothing in the background to where you can yeah. see. You take the picture of it and then you release it, just like you do a bass. Huh? That's kind of cool. I'm obsessed with it. I've gone twice with with Suka and multiple two pounders each trip. I've gone six times in the past couple weeks by myself, and I've caught five fish. <laughs> it's so depressing man it is so depressing like i'm going i'm like okay i got it i got it i could get it then i go by myself and i'm like i I don't have it it reminds me of when i first got into bass fishing did you ever have that moment mark where you realized the difference between we could go into this long discussion i've thought about this long during the off season there's a lot of people who can catch fish but the holy grail are the guys who are able to find the fish right agree so did you do you ever remember that moment where it clicked where you were like holy cow i oh, yeah. found my own bass like i can go out and catch oh fish. yeah tournament wise yes i yeah. remember that it yeah. was like in the 90s and it was on fort gibson and me and my good friend pat sheeler actually found something on a rattle trap we had no info no help no nothing and that was really the first time that we actually went out and found it on our own. And caught him. And freaking caught him. Right. And because I remember when I first started by myself and everything, you go yeah. out and you're like, man, I feel like I, I know how to catch fish and stuff. But like you just don't have that confidence because it hasn't clicked. Yeah. Like right now where I am in this kind of like winter giant crappie game, <laughs> I feel like I have all the tools and I just don't know what the hell I'm doing. And it's like I got to put in that time and I'm hoping eventually yeah. in this it'll clear click just like it kind of did for that first time i remember i was out and i like caught three like over four pounds and i was like holy cow i figured it out because i can go out as a co-angler and stuff and catch him but i couldn't do it by myself hey by the way people want to know just real quick what are you fishing this year just real quick bassmaster central opens nickels uh team series mike jackpot a skeeter or two because i really like that series uh the aba pro series the bass nation bass nation regional and the u.s open at the end of the year i've got 19 on it right now i think if i can get to fish 15 of those i'll be happy but bassmaster central opens all right there you have it some people on the instant feedback were wanting to know why i do you have fans. Here's a cool thing that People we talked about, you. too, during the break. All of the stuff like we did with the AFCO Bass Boot Camp last year. Yeah. This year, I'm still going to keep the cameras rolling. Still going to do it the same style, but it's going to be on the BTL YouTube page. Yeah, very cool. So, All right, coming back with Drew Cook. It is great to be back in studio, kicking off 2020 right here on a Monday. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. serious about catching fish that hds is a dead giveaway you've got the best fish finding sonar money can buy time to build the ultimate fish finding system with live sight sonar see what your lure is doing in real time watch fish strike as it happens see for yourself take the live sight sonar 30-day challenge if live sight sonar doesn't help you find and catch more fish send it back no questions asked Yeah, you care about gear ratios, inches per turn and ball bearings, but most importantly, you want reliability and dependability in the equipment you use. Lose doesn't cut corners when it comes to the gear they build. The new Speed Spool LFS is the best $99 reel in the market. Go see for yourself.
We've paired one of the most iconic hulls in the history of bass boats with a proven lineup of trusted accessories. We're bringing you best in class value and performance, leaving others in your wake. Turnkey value, turnkey performance. The Pantera 2 is an overachiever in the 19 foot category. Once you hit the throttle, you'll feel the rush and there's no looking back. Kevin, what are you doing here? Oh, I'm just filling in for Billy. I need a 660 Shad crankbaits in uh, the Series 5 model. We're out. You're not out. You got all kinds of them right there. We're out. Kevin, I need six. Have a lollipop. I do not want a lollipop. Have a lollipop. Do you have it in sexy shad color? At Duck It Fishing, we have assembled the top pros in the country to help us design rods to give you a competitive advantage. Castability, strength, durability, action, sensitivity, weight and balance, and consistency. Combine that with the best warranty in the industry and you have rods that are pro-driven. Duck It Fishing, pro-driven. I want to share to you a new product we got coming up from the Sunline. This is the FC leader size spools that we have now. Um, we've gotten a lot of requests for this. A lot of you guys use fluorocarbon for leaders only, myself included. And one of the problems you have is when you have a 200 yard spool, that might last you two, three, four years. You might even lose it before you even get done with the spool. So we've gone to a little smaller spool. These are 50 yard spool sizes. You know, that way you're not holding your line on forever. You can keep your line fresh, use it when you can. It stores real easily in the boat. We got all of our popular line sizes that you're used to with our sniper from five to 14 pound. If you guys are looking for a line that you're only tying for a leader, Go check out Sunline FC Leader 100% fluorocarbon and give it a try. Blue Water by TH Marine. Offering LED lighting solutions for your boat, trailer, truck, ATV, and so much more. Engineered and built to be rugged with waterproof and submersible options. Designed for easy installation, Blue Water is available in a variety of colors and styles. All backed by a limited lifetime warranty. Blue Water by TH Marine. The name Spro says it all. Spro stands for Sports Professionals. When you look at the, the pro staff that Spro has brought on board over the past 15 years, it's been pretty incredible. I mean, one got it just then. From the development of the rock crawler to the McStick, from the fat pop of the Little John series, when you tie, a Spro bait on. You know it's been designed by a professional to get the job done. I got my power pole down Stuck in the mud in the bottom of the lake Sitting so still in the wind and the waves Could even be a hurricane I got my power pole down Meet AFCO's iCast award-winning Hydronaut waterproof system. Hydronaut features a 20K 100% waterproof shell, double dry cuffs to keep water out, speed vent hood engineered to prevent neck strain at high rates of speed, AFCO exclusive Cyclops tactical camera mount, comfort flex shoulder straps for all day comfort, outerwear that you can count on, the Hydronaut waterproof system by AFCO, any fish, any water. All of us on the Pro Tournament Trail use Gamigatsu hooks. Why? Because they are absolutely the best. It's not about how many bites you get. It's how many you put in the boat. Gamigatsu makes hooks for every fishing style. We didn't come this far to lose fish. Did you? For more information, visit Gamigatsu.com. All right, we are back on a Monday, kicking off 2020. And Matthew, make sure when you write your checks or you fill out any forms, just don't put 20 on there. Why? You're leaving yourself open to fraud. 
Oh, because then they can put the 19 after or yeah, something? Yeah, 10, 7. They put anything. Make sure you put 2020 on anything that you have to date. Don't just put 20. Some advice from Mark to Matthew this morning. How'd you hear about that? I saw it on the news. Like the nightly news that you still watch? <laughs> yeah. Night? yeah. That's a great deal. Yeah. Never thought about that. I, I'm here to help, man. Here to help. All right. We are ready to bring in our first guest of 2020. Had a, a great year last year, Matthew. Better than a great year. I was looking at it and I've looked at it like four times and I'm like, there's no way this is right because he, he obviously won the rookie of the year, but he finished seventh in the angler of the year standings. Um, 50 points yeah. behind Scott Canterbury. But I'm looking down the list and I'm like, dude never finished outside of the top 40 yeah. the entire year. Like 39th place was his lowest finish. And I'm like, I've got to be missing a tournament here for him to finish <laughs> to finish seventh and never outside. Now, granted, there were 75 guys on it. But you go back there, I mean, he's never... I mean, he's the lowest check he's ever gotten in Elite Series is five grand. Like, he's never gotten the thanks for coming check. He's always gotten more money. More well, money than Here's that. the other thing, too. When I was setting up the interview with him, he, he seemed a little pissed off about his performance the last couple of events, and I want to talk to him about that. Yeah. Because he was in great, great position based upon the performance that he had for the entire season. And, yeah, he won Rookie of the Year, but still, man, he kind of – Left some, uh, he left some meat on the table, man. But 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 he started out with the 18th on the St. John's River. We'll ask yeah. Drew Cook about starting back there on the St. John's. But you know, with the 10 top 40 finishes and out of his 20 finishes with Bass, I ran some numbers here. You take 75 for uh, the Elite Series regular season. You got 50 in the AOI Championship. You had yeah. 30 in the Open Championship. Then you throw in another 10 Opens that averaged around 150, yeah. 160 boats. And out of all of his 20 20th finishes, on an average of like 100. 130 boats, 125, 130 yeah. boats, and all those. His average finish is a 28th place. Yeah, that's badass. I mean, he's in the yeah. top 88 percentile. Yeah. All right. Let's uh, let's do this. Let's uh, bring him in now. Drew, you there, man? Yes, sir. All right. First guest of 2020, and greatly appreciate you taking time out. I know this is a busy time for you and everybody else trying to get ready for the season. And uh, to kick things off, I want to know how that's going. Are you ready? <sighs> Well, I'm I'm getting there. You know, I just just got my boat um, last week. Got it rigged. Uh, I actually got it delivered here from Texas, and I drove from here to Atlanta to get it rigged at uh, Sonar Pros up there. And then I just picked it up with a day and a. I got a day and a half of practice on Gunnersville for the for the classic, but I mean it was a it was a goat rope and I didn't <laughs> didn't have a, a trolling motor mount. I had to go hunt down a trolling motor mount during christmas um so it, i mean it's crazy but we got it all worked out now i'm getting my butt wrapped uh this week so we'll we'll be ready to roll in a couple weeks do you think the average guy understands how much goes into getting your boat ready for the start of the year because i mean i gotta be honest i i believe there's a lot of guys out there who think that you just say hey i want that boat and everyone's like "Ooh, elite series guy boat let's make sure this thing is ready when it shows up at his door <laughs> not true at all it's it's unreal how long it takes i mean just i mean if you just did like your tackle organization and you started over every year kind of like i do it takes like 30 10 hour days to get everything wow ready again what do you mean you start over like you take everything out you get new yep. like start start over completely i've reorganized everything um whatever i didn't use at all last year it comes out doesn't get put back in um you know like bait wise you know if there's uh, a certain crawl that i have in my crawl box that didn't get to play last year it's not going to play this year either Huh. Just trying to thin the herd, trying to cut down on wasted space and, and stuff like that. Because, I mean, the difference between 150 pounds of plastics in your boat and 120 pounds is about 30 pounds. That, that goes a long way. You keep that old stuff or you put it on eBay, you give it to kids. What do you do with it all? <laughs> I mean, I, I still keep it because, I mean, I don't. I, it might be like a, a deal for some place that we go to and – Texas or Oklahoma or something like that, and I got to bring it out of the. I don't. You don't get rid of fishing stuff, man. Like, <laughs> you just can't do it. He's got a good point. 
Yeah. You know, unless you're big time. Yeah. No, I once got yeah. rid of some crankbaits for rent money, and I've regretted it ever since. Yeah. Like wiggle warts or wex? No, WECs. Oh, yeah, some wet crankbaits? Yeah. What? Oh, wex. See, I didn't know. I'm just two ways. No, no, I am in the know. I've never, it's a difference between the, <laughs> I call them WECs, he calls them wex. Yeah. Yeah. All right, man. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, when I was getting this interview set up with you and, and we were getting a date dialed in and all that, it, some of the conversation that we had, you seemed a little frustrated or mad kind of how things ended up. Yeah, you won Angler or Rookie of the Year, but the Angler of the Year race, you finished, I believe it was seventh. Uh, what, what are your thoughts reminiscing and reflecting back on what happened in those last two tournaments, and what did you learn from that that is really going to help you in 2020? Yeah. Um, you know, I think going into, like, the the last four days of, of fishing, I was leading. I mean, I had 10 killer um, after the, the second or third day, whatever. And I had, like, a 10 or 12-point lead on AOI, and I straight blew it. <laughs> on the third day at ten killer, I only caught one fish. But the the whole thing with ten killer was I didn't have anything going there. I had one spot. I only had a couple hours of practice for the event. Um, had to fly home, fly back for the tournament. So I, mean, I was fortunate to, to catch what I caught, but um, it still didn't work out. And then so I was in like fourth, going to St. Clair, still within twenty something points. Um, had a shot and the first day at St. Clair I mean I just got punched right in the face and it, I needed for myself on the last two days at St. Clair to catch a bag and I mean for for my own good so I didn't end on a bad note so um, I was able to catch you know a couple of 20 pound bags the last two days at St. Clair but you can't come back from 13 pounds up there um and you know move on for the you know get the get the ball rolling again for for 2020 but it i mean i was i learned a lot um uh, my biggest learning curve for for the for the year as a rookie was probably um at the st lawrence river all year i had only fished you know to try to win an event and AOI really wasn't the whole point thing wasn't in my you know wasn't front running to it it was to win and on the third day at St. Lawrence I was in like 20 something place and I I tried to to swing the bat real hard and you know make it back into that top 10 for for a shot to win the event and I fell on my face and it, it cost me. I dropped all the way to, to 35th, and that and Canterbury came in like second or third. So that's, I mean, I lost 20 points in one day, not thinking about AOI. Had I just gone and did what I had been doing, caught, you know, 17 to 21 pounds, then I probably would have moved up a little bit more and saved some points. But that was a, a valuable lesson. It was, it was one of those times where you had to think about the big picture, um, and I didn't. All right, let's talk about 2020. How much homework have you done? <sighs> hours and hours. Um, lots. I've, see, every year I start, um, I have a book, like you know, like a notebook. We have 10 events. It's got 10 sections on it. They've all got the, the, the tournament, waters, the dates, all that stuff. Start with any knowledge that I know. Um, and then after that, I, you know, do any tournament statistics, stuff like that. Um, you know, look at old FLW tournaments, old bass events, um, opens, costas, whatever. Then, I, you know, do the YouTube searches and all that stuff. Watch up. Because um, 99% of the time, whenever you go to most lakes, there's a section of the lake that statistically wins. Um, and... So what I do is, you know, you find that that out and, you know, the time of the year that you're going to be there, what it's going to be like. I spend about a day and a half in that whole area trying to, to, you know, that normally wins. And then I spend a day and a half just doing me, whatever, I, you know, off the wall type stuff. 
You got a big tournament coming up at the beginning of March there, and that would be your first Bass Master Classic of your career. Not your last, yeah. if history's any indication based on your rookie season yeah. <laughs> that you had. But, uh, I mean, you go into this thing, you look at Gunnersville, the way Gunnersville fishes, the success that the guys have had and the way they've caught them at Gunnersville, and you can't help but think, I mean, that's got to suit your strengths and be a fishery that you're going to be comfortable on in early March. And, and just talk a little bit about how you're preparing for that, any different, any more emphasis on it, and then how you think your chances are. Um, you know, first off, Gunnersville, um, I, Gunnersville is really, really special to me because uh, um, Gunnersville helped me make the elites um, whenever I was – just out of high school starting um in college me and my team partner we fished a, a big team tournament trail down here it's kind of like the uh, alabama bass trail if you would but it's florida georgia alabama um and the championship was on gunnersville and we won the championship on gunnersville two years in a row and that gave me enough money to fish the opens um so i've spent a, a, a good bit of time up there i've got I've done very well up there, um, and it, it's it's all going to depend on the the weather, really. What what the rest of our winter has in store for us, of what it's going to be. It's either going to be like a, a crankbait trap deal, um, you know, off the bank, or if it's warm enough, it'll be a chatterbait swim jig trap type thing, and that's you know kind of what I'm hoping for. The closer they get to the bank, the better it is. The further away from all the offshore stuff but it i mean it's gonna be an awesome tournament to begin with only because it's my first classic it's only five hours from my house so i've got a bunch of friends and family are all going to be up there for the whole thing and i mean it's gunnersville it's the 50th year um it's the stars just have to align i feel like they're all gonna it's gonna be a, a home run derby almost Marcus, you know, Bass came out with the article talking about the three Alabama guys that are in it and the favorites. And I, I mean, it's hard to fly under the radar when you win Rookie of the Year. But I, I think Drew might uh, might have a little something up his sleeve. I think he's going to be in the mix on the final day of the Classic. I'll call it right now, the All beginning right. of January, that's two, not, that's two months from call, now. Man. I mean, I know that's not really going out on a limb based yeah. on what we see he's capable of. But uh, I think Mr. Cook might be in the thick of things come Sunday. Hey, uh, a number of people on the instant feedback, Drew, want to know uh, the rain. I guess you guys have gotten a lot, or there's been a lot of rain in Alabama. Uh, is that going to have a huge impact on things that take place? Um, no, you know, it seems like, especially around my house, like Lake Seminole, stuff like that, it seems like every two years we get a really wet winter, um, you know, a bunch of rains and stuff, and the you know the water rises and the current gets swift and it, it takes out a lot of the grass whenever it's you know dead and stuff like that and it makes it even better because it only leaves you know if you have a football field of grass you got a football field for fish to hide in if the current and the high water knocks out all but 20 yards of that grass well all the same fish are still going to go there's just going to be in that 20 yard stretch and i don't think and if it is still really muddy a lot of those fish will push up even shallower and then you might see an old school blade come into play well, hang on one other question a follow-up they want to know what the water temp was when you were practicing uh whenever i was up there it was it was just the, i went up there the day before and the day of a cold front um the water temperature was like 55 first day and 53 the uh the second day all right hang on one more david in wisconsin wants to know where's the zone alive belt <laughs> i've got it right here where's it at i ain't getting huh <laughs> is it hanging on the wall is it on a cabinet where do you have it I, yeah i've got it sitting right here you want to see it yes okay it's in it's in this little case though oh okay <laughs> Is he prying it off the wall right now? <laughs> some drywall work done. Yeah, I didn't. I don't, I don't leave it exposed because only important people get to see it. Oh, very nice. Yeah. Is it heavy? I mean, 
I mean, it's it's pretty legit, honestly. <laughs> it's not it's not the ones you get on say like WWE on it or anything like that. It's I mean, it's hard. Wow. That that kind of went down right at the beginning of the year, kind of even before the Elite Series season started, right? Yeah, it was uh, the the week before we started practice on the St. John. How big was that for you just as far as, I guess, fan notoriety or kind of creating a little buzz for your season to have that kind of go down with Zona before you kind of became a household name? Oh, it was huge. Um, and, you know, really only being mic'd up like one or two times earlier being mic'd up for that thing and like having the camera guys in your boat and you know how much crap they tote and like they just take up the whole left side of your boat now you know that it, i mean it helped a lot um we had a good time it was i mean we we freaking crushed them too <laughs> so um, that was only the third the, the, that I mean, you hadn't had a camera really in your boat at all. Like that was just kind of like trial by fire. Yeah, I, I had um, me and my partner in college. We had a, you know a camera guy once or twice um, in some of the college tournaments, but but that was it. That's the first time really that I had the the whole deal. All right, I have to ask the business question because you won Rookie of the Year. How has the sponsorship gig gone in 2020? Have you picked up anybody? Uh, are, are things good for you headed into this 2020 season? Uh, yeah, I picked up a, a few people. Um, I didn't. I had a bunch of bunch of offers from from other companies, but I was fortunate enough last year to get with companies that I wanted to um, and I am trying to be one of those guys that is something that's loyal that that people can like trust believe in I mean it still is a business obviously and you got to do whatever's right for you as a as a, a family and stuff like that but I think the notoriety is a lot better whenever for for five years you know big bite baits is still the best bait for you because for 10 years you've used it it's not like you know people that jump around every year to a new a new sponsor i mean you can't really trust those guys um but i mean i did get a few new ones um i didn't get rid of any other ones so uh <laughs> we're trying to make some more room on the on the jersey and the wraps and stuff but all right very good uh what is your what is your wrap gonna be and then hang on one second matthew something just clicked in my head i have to run into the house because there is something that we have to have to close the show out all right can we not take a commercial break after no cook? no you're gonna leave you're, the awkward yeah. silence like last no, no, time no no you're gonna talk to drew oh, all okay. right continue the interview with drew because what is it, it a, just, a prop Dude, it is You're massive. not going to make gonna me be... eat something no, 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 no. hot or You're... spicy. No, 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 no. A fan sent it to us, and it is priceless. And I forgot to go get it. So, Drew, I will be right back right. in 60 seconds. Because so... something clicked in my head with Drew. Go get your yeah. stuff. All right. I, I want to know your rap, title rap for this year, and then I'm going to let Matt continue. Um, it's, it's Southland Plantation. Again. Okay. All right. So, I was looking at the schedule then. With the St. John's, uh, you had the 18th place uh, finish there to start out. Obviously, you're probably looking to finish higher than 18th this year to kick things off. But then you add like the Chickamauga, then you talked about Gunnersville, then Lake Eufaula in Alabama, which I would assume you're familiar, not fam you are familiar with that lake there, kind of in the area. Yeah. And then St. E. Cooper on South Carolina. Like that whole first half of the season is wheelhouse stuff for you, is it not? home run derby stuff it um i definitely think that the the st john's river um eufaula santi cooper those are all all fastballs over the plate and so, you have a history on all of them yeah well actually i've never been to santi cooper okay ever. but you follow but, but i know what santi cooper is and what it's like and i've I think it'll be like throwing a rabbit in the briar patch. All right, so 100 pounds on the St. John's River to win again? Yes or no? Oh, these are yes or no questions. 100 pounds to win on the St. John's River again? It depends on the weather. Uh, but yeah. 
Yeah. If we hit it right, yeah. Then the second one's Chickamauga in early February, right? I ain't got a clue. It's probably going to snow. Just <laughs> but, but 100 pound potential to win there. Of course. Gunnersville, three days on the classic. So over 70 to win the classic? Yeah. Lake you fall Alabama the beginning of April. Is there potential for 100 pounds there? It will happen. Really? 100 pounds there. Santee Cooper, middle of April. That's going to be 100 pounds. Potential. So you have the potential to start out. One, two. The first four events. Look at this, Mark. I haven't even thought about this before. You have the potential for the first half of the season. Every regular season event takes 100 pounds to win the event. Four century belts. And then the classic could set records as well. Correct. And then you guys go to the Sabine and reality hits really hard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> get hit right in the gut. <laughs> but then you get the, the Texas Fest, that could take 100. St. Lawrence, it's been pushing 100 in the past. We've seen mid 90s. Yeah. Most it's weight ever. It really is. Yeah. Well, what's the one that you're dreading the most? Dave wants to know. The one that I'm dreading the most, um, I guess I'm not. Well, I'm not really dreading the Sabine, um, but I just hate driving a hundred miles for seven pounds. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a good point. Yeah. It's a good point. All right, man. You guys need a grind every now and then, and that will be a grind. Oh yeah, I, like yeah. I said, I'm, I'm. I mean, I'm not. Not really, not looking forward to. It. I, I mean, I love those those tough tournaments. That's where you can really do good, and you can you can make up ground in a day because it does have some good fish in it. So yeah. it it's it's a reality check. You see who shines and stuff like that. Yeah. What are your thoughts on New Year's resolutions? Do you have any? No. Do you do that? That that's just kind of something. Do you do that, Matt? Absolutely all? not. <laughs> I didn't think so. <laughs> Just kind of thought. I mean, do you? Well, I did this year. I mean, I got to lose twenty pounds. I know everybody's out there trying to lose weight, but it's a matter of living or dying with me. It's a little different. Anyway, uh, Drew. <laughs> <laughs> well, your- somebody wanted to know on the instant feedback about the New Year's heart attack uh, free in twenty twenty. Yeah. That's yeah, the that's, New Year's that's, resolution, that's me right there. I. Uh, Jim in Indiana wants to know: Are you fishing the opens? No, I'm not. I uh, I had planned on it, and um, I was going to fish the Eastern Opens, and uh, got engaged, planned our wedding, and they came out with the open schedule and the, the second opens on my wedding day. So, I'm not going to fish it. Probably a good choice there. <laughs> it's not like the yeah. wedding date can't be moved. Yeah. You'd be surprised. <laughs> Nick, it's, what, it's kind of tough to to uh, to plan anything in the industry with how we do. It, you know? Jeffrey's kids getting married this year. He sent yeah. the invitation out, and I told him, I said, "Just let you know if I got club derby or something." Yeah, I'm not like, going to ah, be it's there. All right. It's all right. No big deal. It's all good. All right, man. Last thing, the hat that is behind you, dude. That hat rocks. What? What? Oh, yeah. What is that? This is uh. Oh, he's got two. My, he's got two. I, I shade tree, man. <laughs> yeah. Personal, um, you know, when you're when you're on TVA, fishing, sun. I'm offshore fish a lot, um, so I wear them on the tractor, stuff like that. Very nice. What's yeah, underneath it? I don't see. I haven't seen what's underneath it. It's Some like stuff. fat. Oh wow. Oh yeah, it's nice. <laughs> Very <laughs> nice. You need to give me one of those, Matt. I think we could maybe arrange that. Yeah, I like that. I could mow the yard wearing that. I need that, man. You don't mow the yard. Oh, you yeah, pay people to I mow your not. yard for you. Heck, I you do. You got a I yard not. guy. You got a pest guy. Not. You've got, got a landscape guy. No. Life is good for no. you. All right, Drew, Just man. look out the window and say, move that rock over <laughs> That's there. Not true. <laughs> Looks like you missed a spot around the no. elm tree. No, not true. All right, Drew. Hey, man, we're going to let you go, but uh, really... Really appreciate you taking time out. I know it's a busy time for you, but a uh, great way to kick off 2020 with the reigning Rookie of the Year. And uh, big expectations for you this year, man, and wish you nothing but the best. Thanks, sir. I appreciate y'all having me, and uh, looking forward to talking with y'all again. All right. Hopefully that will happen. All right, man. Take care, Drew. All right. See y'all.
right. There you have it, Drew Cook. And uh, good dude, man. He's there's a lot of guys that have that opportunity at the classic this year matthew yeah a, a ton of guys yeah. that could really do a lot of good for themselves and i've always said this uh that the the day one of the Bassmaster classic i think can be the most important day in a, in a young angler's career or you know if his career is young it doesn't matter how old the guy is yeah because of if you become a storyline early on in the classic I honestly believe that it is more beneficial for you than if you come from behind to win an elite series event later in the year where you weren't a story in it because yeah. it's the one the TV show, all the live coverage, the stories and everything. I mean, I still remember Brandon Polinick, 2011 and Keith Poche and all those guys who have jumped out on day one of the classic to become a storyline. Yeah. I mean, it makes their next couple of years, even if they don't win the thing, it really makes it easier for them to become a household name. I agree. I agree. All right, man. This was so cool, what I got. Here it is right here. So you, Jeffries ran inside right. during the Drew Cook. He comes back with a priority mail yeah. uh, package from the USPS. Yeah, it's like a 10 by 10. It, inches, not yeah. feet. Just a little, little, <laughs> just a little square box. All right, and this is from our friend. Something's uh, rattling over there. Oh, yeah. Joel Crawford. Uh-huh. Right here, and he sent a note with it. I'm going to read the note. It says, Mark, I ran across this the other day. First thing I thought about was the Tommy Biffle show when y'all talked about it. It was about I was about 15 when I first used one. My uncle pulled his out on a trip to Clark's Hill and they work for sure. Just a piece of bass fishing history I thought you might like to add to your collection. Joel Crawford. Okay. Any idea what it is, Matthew? I haven't seen it. Shake it. Shake it again. <laughs> How many things are in there? Two. Is it made out of lead? No. Is it a lure? It is not. It's not. It's sick. <laughs> is it a color selector ding 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 check it out man in the original i had not package. seen that i had not seen that i just remember talking <laughs> about it show. oh my gosh look at that fenwick is that not epic? color selector he sent you this yes well we'll never catch a fish again he won't know what color to use <laughs> Okay, so I'm opening it up. It's like in, uh, think of it, it's like in a box with a little clear plastic. It says Fenwick, color selector, in good conditions. You open it up, it looks like a like a weather dial thing. It's got three set. It's clear, stained, and muddy. And then it's got all sorts of different color rainbow patterns. And then like a, uh, like some heavy, what would you well, call that? Well, that's the sensor. Sensor that yeah. you drop down into the water. Yeah. And then the dial tells you what color to use if it's clear it'll it reads whether it's clear stained or muddy yeah and it tells you what what color <laughs> oh no it'll tell you it'll just go to a dial and then you determine whether it's clear stained or muddy and then pick your color based okay. on that all right but you just it's kind of faded just a little bit but not no, much it's all good how about that you need to install well we need to install this on one of our boats <laughs> well you don't install it you just drop it down. Why does it plug in the back? I that I oh don't know. no, that just goes in like that. Okay, is that what that is? Yeah. Do you have a? Is there a battery or? Where? I I don't know. I'm gonna have to look into it, dude. It's thirty years old. I know, but it's got to still work. <laughs> I would what think if it it's, would. What if it's actual like magic now? Can you imagine if somebody came out and I don't care what event, be it an open, an, a, a, a circuit event, a major, whatever, and pulled out that right there. How cool would that be? Do you think that people would run out and start buying those things again yeah, well, here's, if they won, if they had success? Here's the problem, Mark. I'm looking at the colors on the color selector, Yeah, and I ain't got stuff in those colors. <laughs> We're talking like some violet, some Kelly green, like Oregon ducks yellow, yeah. gray. But I think it's faded a little bit. It might have faded a little bit. Not sure. We need to try it out. We need to try it out and, and, and figure out how this it works. This could be your winning edge to Arbuckle this year. 
You're 0 for 5. I know. What you've been doing clearly hasn't worked. So in our one-on-one uh, -on -one match, you need to break out the color C light. I guess they're saying it takes a 9-volt battery. Oh, okay. Do you see a slot for a 9-volt battery? It, it, that's way above my level the, the, of the electronics. The one that looks like a box. I'm sure you could pop this back open and figure it out. Anyway, Good the job. original case... One of the coolest things that fans have sent us, man. Cannot thank you enough. And uh, we're, we're going to try that bad boy out. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Lock that. So how often do you pull that out? Is that like something you pull out at the beginning of the day or I, I, every time you... I, I, I don't know, man. See watercolor. Bingo. I don't know. You know who invented this, right? Dr. Lauren Hill. That is right. Kenyon Hill's dad. Yeah, so I'm actually... I'm going to take this by and... and uh, show canyon at the uh automotive place that he owns yeah he just did a yeah. deal there at uh shoreline boat and rv with the uh they put together a uh like a youth seminar deal yeah like luke palmer from oklahoma was there and dale hightower and i actually gave a seminar you did yeah <laughs> did anybody videotape that uh there's a still picture that shows proof <laughs> that i did <laughs> i'll give you three guesses to what i talked about it was 30 minutes and it was my it, it was wacky like, rigging god you're so crazy yeah. did i tell yeah. you no no i just mm -hmm. know that's your game man i took the i took the wacky worm and uh i took a uh folding table you know just like a plastic folding table and i put a box under the folding table right yeah and then i used it as my dock on how to fish the wacky worm around the dock okay. the, using the folding table as a prop. Wow. The kids didn't ask a lot of questions afterwards, but the were they uh, intimidated? No, but the parents did. Like afterwards, I had really? like a bunch of the co co coaches and parents come up because I use I, I did my system, man. I, I held up a pack of straight tail worms. I said, "This is all you need for nine to eleven pounds. I ain't gonna win much." <laughs> I said, "But I'll finish six to tenth and make the championship doing this." And then I said. Use this in conjunction with BMR squared, Bridgers, Marinas, Rip Rap, and Ramps. Yeah. Said you'll always be around fish. Gene Gilliland's survey of Lake Thunderbird 15 years ago showed that 68% of fish that were caught in a tournament stayed within a mile of the ramp for one year after being caught. Following it? Yeah. And I said, here you have pinch points, you have current, you have transition areas, you have horizontal and vertical cover meeting in the same spot, you have hard shade lines, Very you nice. have resident fish and release fish, and no one can lay claim to a stretch of riprap, bridge, marina, or dock. You can take a 50,000 acre lake, break it down into about 2,000 acres, know you're always around fish, and you always have a bait that'll catch them under any conditions 12 months out of the year. Super simple. Very nice, man. Were you nervous? No. <laughs> See, I did the same deal at Kurt Dove's youth seminar. Yeah. But I didn't set a I, I didn't set a timer. So I was supposed to do a half hour one there and one an hour and ten minutes. I actually yeah. just talked right through Kurt <laughs> Kurt Dove's speaking <laughs> time. So this time I set a timer on vibrate in my pocket. Yeah. So when my thigh started vibrating, I wrapped it up. It stayed right on time. Very nice. Very nice. All right, man. Uh, I have a little homework for you. All right. For tomorrow. I want you to Google up the name Luis Robert. Because we're going to talk about Luis Robert tomorrow. And turn Female? that. No? Male? Yeah. You sure it's not Louis? Luis. Louis? Like French? It might be Louis. I don't know. Louis? But I think it's Louis. Louis or Lu Luis? Lu Luis. I think is how is you he pronounce French? it. French? No. All right, we're going to make a comparison on what's going down with this dude. And when you find out what this guy's getting, you're just going to shake your head. But there is a fishing comparison that I want to make, and we will talk about it tomorrow. All right, great way to kick off 2020, folks. Uh, we will be back tomorrow, same time. And uh, what do you have on the agenda, Matthew? For what? Today. I've got a meeting. I have a business, a business. meeting. Jeez. I have a business meeting today, Mark. Jeez. All right, well, go take care of some business. All right. Jacob Wall tomorrow, and then Jacob Wheeler on Wednesday. Everybody be safe. That is it. Kicking off 2020. We're out of here.